Hello everybody, this is Scott Hartley and I'm here to show you how to properly optimize your Bits WordPress theme. Uh, I'm using this on an actual live site, but because it's not fully developed, I'm not going to play around too much with the front end. I'll show you some of the things, but keep in mind that it is still rough and it still needs to be improved. So you can visit this site now, and if you're viewing this on the day of the upload, there's a good chance that it may not be complete, and I apologize for that. But let me just go through and show you how to properly optimize the theme in the best way possible. The first thing you need to do with any WordPress is to grab any WordPress theme is to grab the W3 Total Cache plugin. This is the bread and butter of any WordPress website. This will be your best friend if you learn how to use this properly. Now, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to assume that you're on a shared host. If you're on a shared host, you'll only need to use the page cache module and the browser cache module. And I understand that if you use the page cache module, it will cause the views to stop displaying. This will likely be fixed by the developers in a later update, but you cannot ha you cannot expect to run this theme quickly without using a page cache module. Fragment caching would work, and it is used in the pro version, but it's very complicated to set up unless you're a developer, and there's a good chance that if you don't know what you're doing, that there's no point of you even attempting that. So you really have to weigh the cost of the benefit here. You can have an extremely slow site, or you can wait for the developers to push out an update to solve the problem. They could solve it either by using Jetpack stats, or they can try and use Ajax, or whatever they feel is necessary. But for now, we're just going to deal with it. Click on the page cache module. So we're going to set up the page caching. Go to the page cache, and wait for it to load up. And as you can see, we have our basic settings. Enable these settings as I have set. Cache the post page, feeds, tags, categories, comments. Cache only requests from your website URL. Do not cache for logged in users. Automatically prime the page cache at the default interval for your sitemap and preload the post cache upon publish events. Make sure that you clear your front page and any of the necessary feeds that, you may go, that may go with your website. After you've done that, there's really nothing else to configure in the page cache module. Afterwards, the page cache will just slowly build up over time. The next thing that you're going to use is your browser cache. Browser caching isn't quite the same as page caching. It doesn't actually save anything on your server. Instead, it tells your browser what to save locally. So you're going to use the following settings. Set the last modified header. Set the expires header. Cache control header. The entity tag. And the W3 total cache uh, header. Make sure you don't set cookies for static files and don't click the enable gzip compression. Do not, do not enable gzip here because there's a, there's a solid reason for it at the end. When you go through and you scroll through these categories, make sure that you enable the gzip for the CSS and JavaScript, and make sure you enable gzip for HTML and XML. When you come down to the media and other files section, make sure that HTTP uh, gzip compression is disabled because gzipping media is actually a bigger drain on your server resources and provides no benefit. Most of the time when you try to gzip objects such as videos, music, um, images, it's more costly on the machine because they're larger in size and they don't really improve in performance. In some cases, they may actually make the files bigger. After you've done this, the next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to grab a little plugin called Auto Optimize. Auto Optimize is going to be a little funky. So there's a couple of things that you can do. You can try to optimize the JavaScript code. However, I've not been able to successfully get this installed properly to where all the JavaScript will be will work minified and is in the footer. Something has to be excluded, and I've been trying to wear it down. If you go to their forums and the theme document, and if you go to their forums page on the uh, MNKY help desk, there there will be a post with this video, and there will probably be an update to describe what to exclude from the JavaScript. However, you shouldn't have to worry about JavaScript combining if you have Cloudflare running. Optimize the HTML code. And then CSS, opti CSS options. Optimize the CSS. Generate data URIs for images. And in aggregate the inline CSS. You can also exclude only the admin bar CSS. The icons will not be affected if you combine them. And the and this theme does not make use of them. After you've done so, you'll probably only get 27 files running, which is a good, it's not being overwritten in any way, and you're in the optimal zone. The next thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to grab something called U-Image Optimizer. U-Image Optimizer is a compression tool that makes your images much smaller. 
and this will be your best friend. Make sure you select the Remove Metadata option and the Lossy PNG, optim Lossy PNG Optimization. If you're on a shared host, set a 10 second for the bulk delay. For your advanced settings, you can leave these pretty much at the default levels. Make sure you click the Schedule Optimization and to defer the optimization. Otherwise, outside of this, you've done all that you can. If you, ha if, you're, if you have a site that you've never optimized any of the images for, click over to the Media Library and click Bulk Optimize. From there, you'll reach a menu that will tell you specifically that you can bulk optimize all the images in your media library at that very moment. But we're not going to do that because we still have a couple more areas to fix. For slider revolution, you're going to you're going to have to solve some of the performance issues with it. Slider revolution is inherently bulky and injects itself on every single page, and this is a major issue. Go to the global settings, and in here, include the rev slider libraries globally. Turn this off. You don't need this on every single page. It will only load when this short code exists. Insert the JavaScript in the footer and defer the loading of said JavaScript. While you shouldn't need to do this in the event of auto-optimize breaking it or causing problems, you could simply ignore the rev slider files in auto-optimize and have this running in the footer. After that, you're done. The next final part is to go to easy social share buttons and to go to the advanced settings. From here you'll be met with a window that looks very intimidating but is actually fairly easy to understand. You're going to come over and you're going to go to the optimization tab that will appear up here when it decides to load. The biggest issue with the theme right now is definitely it's very heavy in your database and there's not a whole lot you can really do to solve that problem. Even with 256 megabytes of RAM, it's just slow. Go over to the optimization center and select the following. Use minified CSS files, load the plugin inline styles into the footer, use minified JavaScript files, Remove the version number from static resources, which you won't need to do if you use our plugin. Use pre-compiled resources, yes. Combine all of them into static CSS and then combine into all static JavaScript. Don't play with the activate cache key because we're already using W3TotalCache. Master Slider actually comes out of the box pre-optimized. If you go to the settings window, the only real thing you can do is to enable the cache. Enable the cache for master slider, and I would also hide the info tab table. Set the cache period to the default hours, its default number of 12 hours. There's no other real settings to configure. If you're looking to try and optimize your site further, you can use a plugin called WordPress Sweep. WordPress Sweep works by um, optimizing your database and cleaning up useless resources. For instance, duplicated post meta can be deleted, all with the click of a button. A spam comment can be deleted. If there's orphan term relation, it can also be deleted. I do not recommend deleting things such as this and unused terms if you have posts that are in your uh, drafting stage. Go to the transient options and clear that as well. For optimize and then optimize your database tables. You can also look at using Cloudflare on your website. Cloudflare works as a free CDN for your website that will automatically take all of your content and load it from their CDN. As you can see, this site is far from done. But when you when you open up the CS the HTML of the page, you're met with a very clean single CSS file several JavaScript files, but if you notice none of them are linked because they're all using the data rocket source. Data rocket source is a tool by Cloudflare called Rocket Loader, which automatically loads all of your JavaScript files with uh, basically with lazy loader deferred. Let's go to page speed insights and see what the website gets. 
even in its current stage. Keep in mind that it's not done, and there's still much work to be done. So as we can see, there's render blocking JavaScript and CSS, particularly jQuery and jQuery Migrate. The images can also be optimized slightly more, which we haven't done. Minify JavaScript is from third party. Size targets appropriately cannot be solved. You can optimize the images further by having them resized. However, as this does not come from the de theme default, the best thing to do is just to optimize them. You can also look at lazy loading them by modifying your theme files, but I would not recommend this. If you run the same test on GT Matrix, you'll see your score slightly higher. You'll also see an accurate representation of your load time. As we can see, the biggest thing that's holding back the load time is using sur is to scale smaller images. The fundamental problem with doing this is if a theme serves all the scaled images perfectly, it will typically cause the theme to have several image files. For instance, the newspaper theme, which is extremely popular, creates almost 20 different image sizes. It comes out to about 18. As we can see, our theme is quick, 1.2 second load time with the 2.02 with the point 2.2 megabyte load time. The only other thing you could look at doing is to enable Jetpack Photon, which is a free CDN for your images. Other than that, that's about all I have to show you guys. In the con in the description below, I will be giving you a plugin that comes with a bunch of little filters that will help you optimize your load time a little bit more. For instance, conditionally loading Contact Form 7 or WooCommerce. It can also conditionally load BBPress and other plugins that you're likely using. Okay. I hope this helps.